my dad was a gay guy. He, uh, he used to fuck this deaf guy, uh, consensually. <laughs> he didn't just like sneak up on him. And they used to do sign language to each other uh, and they would use it to hide things from me. Like they would get in fights in sign language. Have you ever seen a fight in sign language? I was six years old. I thought they were casting spells on each other. <laughs> Just me in a room with two full grown men being like Dr. Strange moves on you. Wow. You're like, is your dad gay? I'm like, I don't know if he's gay, but he is an airbender, so that's what he. <laughs> Welcome back to the Tempe Mentality Podcast, where I get to meet fellow comics, talk about his comedy career and his upbringing. And with the help of Big Med Mike, Mike Albanese, you can follow him on Instagram, Michael Al uh, Big Med Mike, right? Um, thank you, Mike, for helping us out. And now I am, I've been wanting to do this episode with this guy because, so the story is, it was my first week in New York. And it was my second day doing open mics in New York. And one of them, uh, it was at the producer's club. They were still doing mics at the bar. And I introduced myself as an Indonesian. And then somebody, somebody, a white guy at the back was like, <laughs> Apa kabar? And the guy is Grant Moore. What's up, man? What's up, Apa kabar? Yo, what? Kabar baik. Kabar baik, yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is wild. But Welcome, see, guys. It's so good to be here. This is this is very cool. Thank you. It's good to have you officially in New York City. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I know um, um, uh, Grant has, uh, we've been um, going back and forth about, uh, I think I have been telling you that I wanted to be, I want you to be on my YouTube to mm. talk about stuff yeah and we've been doing mics and i'm i did his mic yeah it's a story in itself but uh what's up man not much very good to be here very i haven't seen you in a while i know i went back uh to, to indonesia uh, it's supposed to be a couple of months only but um, oh, okay it extended it's a, a long long story bullshit yeah well you got a whole life back there so yeah i gotta make money but yeah <laughs> yeah it's oh, expensive yeah. to live in new, new york. york you need to make money that, it's crazy. that's tracking yeah. people in new york look at me like you're stupid to want to go here no what how what's the swearing situation on this oh say whatever you want to say yeah fuck those people <laughs> they, they've never you, this is the greatest city on earth you're not from new york as well right no i'm from wisconsin Wisconsin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is what, so the podcast is going to be a lot about how you grow up, upbringing and oh, where, really? Where, yeah. Also. Oh, yikes. <laughs> because I want I always want to know how does someone become funny? You know, usually a bad childhood. That's why I'm surprised you want to get into <laughs> and it. Bad childhood is good for podcast. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, <laughs> let's dig into the trauma. Uh, but before that, before that, let's talk about you being in Indonesia, being in Indonesia for yeah. quite some time. That's yeah. Remember that day, the producers club. Yeah. Right. I wish I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you are as shocked as I was to know that there's somebody in the crowd who speaks Indonesian. Yeah. Because I'm probably the first Indonesian comic you see. Yeah, you're York. the only Indonesian comic I've met. <laughs> Sometimes when I, I've been at like uh, on trips to like national parks and I'll overhear someone speaking Bahasa, oh. and then I'll jump in a little bit and be like, "Oh, uh, apa kabar," and then they start talking like, "Oh, they get so excited because uh -huh. nobody speaks Bahasa here." Yeah, and yeah. then I remember that that's the only thing I know how to say, <laughs> and it, I go, "No, no, 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 no," <laughs> and you are still the only person I know who's white. <laughs> I am white. <laughs> and speaks a little bit of Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah, city kid. Yeah. City kid, yeah. yeah. So what's the story? Where were you? I was in Sumba. You know Sumba? Sumba. I told I told Mike you were yeah. in this like it's not I want to hear what you know about Sumba because I've never heard of like someone from Jakarta what they think like what they know about it because it's oh, very separated, right? Yeah. So to uh, to everybody else who who's not familiar with Indonesia. So Indonesia is a uh, is an archipelago, right? It's it consists of seventeen thousand island, but there are main island like Java, mm -hmm. uh, Borneo, Sumatra, Papua, and stuff. But Sumba is this one little island, and it's very beautiful, right? Insanely beautiful. Insanely beautiful. And uh, they it's don't not... have a lot of like exports. Yeah. So the government hasn't given them a lot of attention. Now this is me. This is my very basic understanding of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so really, um, the only thing there is, it's just so beautiful. 
Yeah. But um, it hasn't been accessed very much because it's hard to get to. Yeah. Um, but now they finally have a flight from Bali, like 40 minutes, mm-hmm. and uh, people are starting to find out about it, and mm-hmm. it's amazing. It's it's actually, even for Indonesian, it's a new destination to go to. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it, it hasn't got the recognition that Bali has, or maybe Lombok. Yeah. But it's as beautiful it's as beautiful and it hasn't been destroyed by australian people <laughs> so it's really it's got everything you would want all right to put it into context all love for my australian people not for me bro. <laughs> <laughs> but um you've been to bali right yeah uh, mike have you been to bali i have not i'd love to though yeah a lot of white white people over there that's why i want to go <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the ones that we are Kind of like, uh. <laughs> you're trying to be diplomatic. Yeah. I'm still somebody in Indonesia. Right? No, I have to be yeah, careful. You're, yeah, you're, oh, I, you're more than somebody in Indonesia. <laughs> but the Australian tourists there, let's just say they're wildin'. They go there to fuck shit up. It's some, not all of them. Yeah. <laughs> but a good percentage of them treat it like Vegas. Because it's, yeah. it's not an expensive flight. They can yeah. go out, they can, you know... Go to uh, Sky Garden or whatever that club is called, and then yeah. they can do a bunch of crazy shit for not that much money. And there's, you know, there's not a lot of respect for the local yeah. culture. Right now, I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to put it out there. Right now, a lot of Indonesian are not loving uh, tourists from Australia and from Russia. From Russia, because they, because after. Uh, the Ukraine popped off. They all started, all the expats started moving there, right? Yeah, yeah my buddy yeah. still lives there, and he, he's a white guy, hates Russians. <laughs> he's like racist against Russians now that they all moved out. And, and everybody is now a guru for whatever reason in uh, Bali. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's crazy. That, something in the something in the water gives you that sweet boule magic, <laughs> and you, you have to start putting crystals in weird places. <laughs> Bali is a word, a boule is a word for white people. Yeah. And it's an Indonesian. Is it a slang word? Like I mean, slang? it's hard to offend white people based on their like skin color. So <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good word. Yeah, I so think you should say bule a lot. Bule, bule, yeah. yeah. And um, so what happened is in Bali, a lot of this um, people from Australia, from Russia, um, and Americans are actually the nicest. Yes, yes. I think this is that's the only way. That's the only place where Americans are referred to as n- the nicest. Because they're tired. By the time they get there, they're fucking exhausted. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole it's like a day flight. Hour flight. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah but um, we hate it because all these people are scheming out there. You know, grabbing money because they're illegal. Yeah, got to make a living. Yeah, and then um, they they lie to people, telling them. There's this thing, I don't know if you noticed this, so to claim that they are this guru uh-huh. and to fool all these white people, yeah. they make contents in temples, but being disrespectful, they're butt naked. They're naked. Whoa, in like Borobudur? No, in Bali, basically. Oh, in Bali. Yeah, in, in all this temple. and. A lot of those people are being deported, but um, good. It's yeah. Get these illegal whites out of here. <laughs> Finally, but no, no. Back to you. What were you doing in Sumba? When was this? I was there in from like 2019 to 2020. I'm really bad with dates mm. and just general numbers and stuff. But uh, <laughs> 2019, 2020, I was there for a year working for an NGO called the Sumba Hospitality Foundation. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically. Like I was saying before, Sumba doesn't have a lot of natural resources that mm-hmm. they can export, which mm-hmm. is one of the reasons why the government hasn't put a lot of attention there. It mm-hmm. took so long to get a, like a airport there. They have one landing strip and like yeah. one flight a day. Yeah. And it's wings. Ugh. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing too much inside Indonesian baseball here. But, yeah, um, yeah. No, but it's fine. Anyway, so uh, this, this family who started this uh, organization, uh, they had a background in hospitality and they saw that a lot of companies like... Uh, Marriott and name another company. Mm. Uh, they were starting to buy property in Sumba, mm. and they're basically all just waiting for something to happen with infrastructure. Mm. But it's going to be a, a tourist hub, mm. like it or not. Yeah. And so the most practical way to um, empower the local population is to give them an education in hospitality. Gotcha. Um, so I was working there at that school, and uh, I was teaching English. So and- you're setting up the worker for the. Well, hopefully we would... Capitalists. Yeah, that's how it sounds the way I pitched it. <laughs> and maybe we have to cut that entire thing. 
<laughs> but I think it was just a practical way of like, if if they know about this industry here, they can stay here mm-hmm. and they can hopefully run it. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and that was, and it was also sustainable and all those you know fun catch. So you were teaching? But, yeah, I was I was helping teach English, mm. and then I was working on the farm. So little manual labor and then interacting. What with do you, the What do you mean by working on the farm? There's uh there's a permaculture farm. So mm-hmm. like they try to grow all of their uh, vegetables and fruits mm-hmm. on the premises. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I was like being a hoe, hoeing, and mm-hmm. I was uh, watering and you know planting stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and uh, really amazing people. And so I, I had a great time. A year. Yeah, just so a year. Did Long you get to fuck to, anybody? Well, come on now. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I Do you have this a, mistress? a family <laughs> podcast? <laughs> it's not. Uh, no, I, no, I didn't. Did get you get to, to fall in love? Listen, I had a lot of fun in my bamboo hut by myself, but that was it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have no... I, I really... I, I really didn't see that question coming from you. That surprised me. <laughs> really? Did I get to fuck anybody? <laughs> no. No, but I mean, being Indonesian myself, I have no idea what it's like to be there. I've never been there. And you know how yeah. it is in Indonesia. Every island is like a life in itself. Totally different. Different culture, different language, yeah. different lifestyle. I have no idea. I have yeah. no idea. It's, was it was it hard for you to to adjust? Like when you when you arrived in Sumba, was like, yo, there's no Wi-Fi in this motherfucker. <laughs> uh, I mean, that I got used to pretty quickly. I mean, there there's one. There's the weird experience of being like one of the only white people, which is not a mm. thing I've had before, mm. and uh, having people just like stare at me. <laughs> um, but there was also just like Sumba is this. It's 1.5 the times the size of Bali mm-hmm. and things are there's not a lot of infrastructure so there's a lot of separation there's a lot of tribes there's mm-hmm. a lot of like uh, different languages mm-hmm. so it's just a lot to get used to culturally where maybe one thing's okay here and one thing's completely wrong in the other place or mm-hmm. all that stuff was confusing but it's fun at the same time like that's mm-hmm. what made it exciting food um, must be wild in 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 Sumba, Sumba. no no it's just like It's like uh, you know barbecues, uh, Bobby Goring, oh yeah, Bobby Goring, all the basic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Goring. Yeah. Do you miss that? Uh, I miss. There was a, a war room down the street that made uh, Bobby Goring that was like insanely good. I yeah. miss Mama Jessie's Bobby Goring. Bobby Goring is pork, fried pork, fried pork, fried yeah. pork. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's wild. I'm a Muslim, so I'm not allowed. To eat pork. Oh, however, oops, I do. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I do. Whoa. I no, I actually stopped because I no, I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm 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 cutting my meat consumption way. All meat. Yeah, all meat. I still oh, eat fish. Okay. So I'm base seventy percent plant based, thirty percent seafood. Oh, right okay. Now. Wow, But, you're in New York for only a couple months, and you're already <laughs> saying the word plant based. <laughs> Yeah, it's because you're already getting annoyed. <laughs> you're gonna be in Williamsburg in no time, baby. I'm just. This is a health issue kind of thing, right? Oh, so it's okay, not a shit. <laughs> Whoops. Because you don't know. A lot of people in New York don't know. They see me like this, but I was. I don't know how it is. You 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 still remember kilograms? Uh, I, never, kilograms? I can't convert them, but oh. I know the concept. Yeah, but I used to be. Way bigger than this, and then really? I I passed out at a restaurant, a fucking restaurant. I was about to eat pancakes. Oh, you got too excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember pancakes the pancakes. <laughs> this was in Bali, actually. This was in Bali. I was about to have pancake. It was just a brunch place, and I just fall flat on the table. It was scary. That's really bad. <laughs> That's scaring my 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 kids, my wife. Yeah. And then I checked up, and it, it turns out I had I was unhealthy, and so I altered my lifestyle. And so now I'm a plant based eater slash fishes. It's called Mediterranean diet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. I am becoming a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, But yeah. That's good though. That you. Lo- how big were you? Well, what do you mean? Oh, how big how large, how the size? Yeah, when you were falling over pancake piles. <laughs> About 30, 35% percent bigger than I am right now. Okay. 30, yeah. I'm trying to 30, add 35% percent of you. Fat, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, so I lost a lot of weight. And so I and I like how it feels on my I don't want to sound like I'm I'm from Williamsburg, Brooklyn, so <laughs> let's just stop. But okay, okay. going back to uh Sumba, and then you had to go back because 
mission accomplished or you were like, I needed to, oh, fuck I, this. I needed to start my life again back in the United mm -hmm. States. I'd been gone for two years. I was in uh, Chile for a year and then I was in Indonesia for a year and I, uh, I basically needed to go to college. Like I needed to start so How school. old were you? I was uh, 18 in uh, Chile and then 19 in Indonesia. Wow. I mean, 19 to 20. So. so definitely during these age where you're trying to, I don't know what the word is in English, but you're not trying to find yourself. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, mostly drinking, but there was some finding <laughs> myself as well. But, uh, yeah, Zumba I needed a to great come place home. to drink also, right? Well, uh, do you know what Pechi uh, is? Pechi. Pechi. It's like, you know how like, they have Arak in Bali? Yeah, Arak. And, uh, what's oh, the one in, uh, um, Arak, Bali, Tuak. Tuak, yeah. Tuak, yeah. Oh, Tuak is good. Tuak is good. Tuak yeah. makes you feel like Superman. <laughs> I love Tuak. Um, but Tuak is like a beer more than a. It's yeah. like almost like a hard kombucha. Yeah. Speaking of Williamsburg. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just I needed to grow up. Yeah. Yeah. I still haven't, but that was that was why I left. <laughs> and then after Indonesia, straight to New York, or you went back to? No, I went back to Wisconsin. I uh, was a fucking boozer for a little bit, and I got my life together and uh, went to college, and then graduated, and then came to New York. Right. So I have no idea. Um, like this is I'm so new being in New York. I don't understand when people refer to s several places or several cities mm -hmm. like it has meaning to to the place. Like some comic okay. would say, some comic would say. Uh, you know, I'm from Long Island. You know how that is. I'm yeah. like, I don't know how no. Long Island is like. And you, you, know should, you don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> but what's Wisconsin? I don't know. I have no idea. Wisconsin. You, have you heard of like the Midwest? Yeah. Okay. So it's just like, um, it's, I guess, uh, kind of the country essentially, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. north, mm -hmm. um, very green, mm -hmm. lots of cornfields, mm -hmm. lots, we're known for cheese. Mm -hmm. make a lot of cheese and dairy right, farms right mm -hmm. uh, but it's very beautiful and then the midwest everybody's very polite and nice those are kind of the stereotypes right. but the only thing to do is drink alcohol <laughs> and hunt if you hunt yeah. yeah hunt yeah what do you hunt uh deer well you can hunt anything except for people <laughs> <laughs> that's why so it sounds like uh like the i don't want to say this the, please like a countryside of it yeah yeah, yeah. So that's I mean, why I, I grew up like near a small city called mm -hmm. Madison, which is the capital, mm -hmm. in like uh, like the suburbs by the country. Mm -hmm. um, so like I was friends with a lot of farm kids, and then friends with like kids who were like closer to the city. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a good mix of of uh, people. Um, they're they're mostly white, mm -hmm. but it's a good mix of different backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, and it's super safe. And I don't know. I love the Midwest. Right. I'm, I'm very happy I grew up there. So you, uh, what was the, uh, what was the household like growing up? Uh, you have brothers and sisters or your parents? I have, I have one sister mm -hmm. and then, uh, I have a mom and a dad. Mm -hmm. Um, they're divorced. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, so I live with my mom most of the time. So when you, uh, they're divorced. Yeah. By the time you were five, six. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you have, so you have one sister. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. Wow. Yeah. And she's like five, six years older than me. Wow. So, um, I think that might be one of the reasons I like comedy is because I was always alone at home, mm -hmm. uh, and I was always trying to like walk around, and I was like talking to my, like an insane person at a bus stop. Yeah. But I was always like walking around and talking to myself and making myself laugh. Right. So hopefully that's not a diagnosable sentence. <laughs> but uh, yeah, is there like a uh, like a well known comic that's from Wisconsin that you kind of look up to, like like your hero, so to say, or you have other heroes. Chris Farley is from Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, he got more popular, I think, when he went to second. I don't know about anything that I'm saying, by the way. Mm. Uh, <laughs> please don't fact check me. Um, but uh, <laughs> Second city. He's, he, he's from Wisconsin. I think John Mulaney has some connection to Wisconsin. Mm. I, I, I know he like got big in Chicago again, mm. but um, not a lot of like famous people come from mm. Wisconsin. Mm. We're too so, busy drinking to do art. So what what gave you the idea of, you know? Um, I remember when I was a kid, I had, uh, you know, Saturday Night Live. They have like, um, they have like the best of for yeah. particular yeah. Uh, performers. And I yeah. had a best of Dana Carvey. Oh. And uh, I learned how to do an impression from that. Uh -huh. And it, it made my dad laugh. Oh. And like, if I could make my dad laugh, I, think I, the, I fixed the world. Don't so. you think that the first sort of bit that most kids do are mostly impersonating someone. 
Yeah. I think that's what I, that's, I remember the first time I made everybody laugh yeah. was I was impersonating my uncle. Yeah, yeah. Family and, members is yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, it's always like that. It's interesting. Is it, was it the same thing with you, Mike? Did you do like... My, actually, Dana Carvey, his special was a big one for Dude, me. Dude, yeah, I Chopping mean, Broccoli special. Oh, okay. So you're his stand up. His stand up. And okay, then also, yeah. when I was young, um, my parents let me watch Eddie Izzard. Uh, really? Like, from like a very young age. Was he in a dress? And, oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I just like, I was, I'm still obsessed with him. That's, and that's great. Been wow. My, like, I, I wish I could tell a story as good as he can. I can I've do never like seen his him. whole. I got to see him. I've him seen out. him live a couple times, but I've seen his. Um, I could do like his whole album, sexy, still like almost by heart. Wow, wow. do it so now, then I don't have yeah, to yeah, talk. Yeah, I'll do it right yeah. now. Yeah. He doesn't do a lot of shows here in, in in New York, right? He's on tour right now. He's oh. doing like a he's doing what I think is incredible. He's doing a best of tour where he's doing like kind of a reimagination of all of his like hit jokes. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Oh. And so yeah, it's, my sister just went to the one in Atlanta. Like we all just were obsessed with him mm -hmm. as a, as a, I guess it's a he. Eddie identifies as a woman now, but uh -huh, yeah. Oh, full um, on. That's the latest and hey. greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hang yeah, out on the other side for a bit. Yeah, yeah. For I'm him. not familiar actually with uh, Dana Dana Carvey's. I know him. Very silly. Yeah. Very silly, and he he does great impressions. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's like uh, he did a great George Bush impression. He did mm -hmm. Jimmy Stewart impression, which mm -hmm. is what I was like copying from mm -hmm. my dad. Mm -hmm. um, but then I I saw that, and then I saw Will Ferrell's, and like I was like, oh, you. Like you, you can, you can just make people laugh. Mm -hmm. That that it became a concept. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that always seemed like a good thing to be d doing. In Indonesia, you know how it is. We don't have a lot of reference uh, towards comedy, especially yeah. uh, you know pre-internet days. So I yeah. I learned a lot about uh, comedy through uh, DVD bajakan, pirated DVDs. Yeah, <laughs> and I remember there's this one thing. Will Ferrell had this, I think it's called a one-man show, where, I think it's called Thank You, America. Where he was George Bush. That that one is crazy. That's funny as hell. Yeah. That's he's in very talented. I just watched The Producers, which is a musical that he's in. Wow. But uh, yeah, he's, that's he's amazing. amazing. So, so coming from that, uh, when did you actually start doing comedy? Did you do it at school or, you know? I am a huge pussy. <laughs> and so I'm a very afraid of everything. Uh -huh. And so it took, I've been thinking about it for years. Mm. Like I probably started thinking about it when I was like 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And I just kept thinking about it and being afraid. And I didn't do my first open mic until I was 21. Wow. Uh, and then I did it and I kind of had this expectation and I had a good set. It was fine. You know, mm -hmm. it did okay. I didn't mm -hmm. bomb, which I thought I was going to bomb, mm -hmm. but I thought it was going to like light this fire in me. Mm -hmm. And I just went back to being a loser. So I was like, oh, well, that must not be it. Wow, really? Uh, so I stopped for like another year. Um, but I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. So I didn't really start start until I was like 22, uh, 23. And then COVID happened uh, shortly after. And so then I took another break. And, I, and then I got back to into it after COVID. And I've been so, going hard yeah. ever since. So that, that the 2000, uh, the when you were 21, that was the first set of jokes that you actually wrote. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was very, it was self-deprecating, but it was like, uh, the premise was, um, my mom still believing in me is like, uh, how people who are like in middle school still believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> like they got a, it's time. <laughs> I mean, I dropped out of community college. I'm not going to be a doctor. Um, and it was, it, it, it did okay. Yeah, it did okay. Yeah. But what, what, why it stopped though? Most people they tr tried for the first time, didn't work, and then like, okay, I give up. But most people, when they succeed the first time, it's like a rush. It's like, yeah, but it wasn't. I I think uh, I'm always looking for like the quick fix, mm. and I I I I had built up in my head like this will solve my problems. Mm. I'll, I'll I'd been listening to all these podcasts is like. Once you do it, you're, and, you, and you're never going to do it again. Mm. And I was like, no, I still have to convince myself to do this every time. Mm. Because it's if you care about something, it scares you. Yeah. Um, and so I was just, I don't know, it didn't solve me. It didn't fix me the way I thought it was going to instantly, which is mm. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that was discouraging that I had that, uh, that kind of like medium mm. internal reaction, yeah. despite doing well. Mm -hmm. Um. But then it, I just realized it wasn't a choice because I just couldn't stop thinking about it. So, but you did it in New York. 
or in, back in Wisconsin? This is back in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. is like like a club? There's a club. There's a club. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the greatest open mics in the world is in Madison, Wisconsin. Really? Because they have one of the greatest clubs in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, comedy on state. Got to go there. It doesn't matter who's going. Go. Um, comedy on state. Comedy on state. Mm-hmm. The club is amazing. The owners are fantastic. It sits like 250-ish people. Nice. Uh, low ceilings. Really great. But um, every Wednesday, they do an uh, open mic that's free for comics. Mm-hmm. Um, and the people show up every single time. Mm-hmm. So you could do your first open mic in front of 250 people. Wow. And the crowds are very nice. It's all fun. They, it, it, they do, do, I mean, people from all around the Midwest, like from Chicago and Minnesota, they all, they drive up like mm-hmm. four or five hours just to do this open mic, to do four minutes. Wow. So that's it's crazy. But that's not where I did mine. I did mine in the basement of a bar uh, <laughs> in front of a bunch of, you know, comics who were on their phone. <laughs> well, did you get to meet those comics back from Wisconsin here in New York? Like, oh, you know, I've, re- I mean, a lot of people move. Uh, from Madison to Chicago mm. to when they like are stepping up. Mm-hmm. Um, I came straight here because I got a job here. But oh. uh, but yeah. why do they go to Chicago? Because it's like closer by. Mm-hmm. It's it's only two hours away. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of keep all the connections that you made I see. in uh, Wisconsin if you fr- come from mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. Um, and still come back and do shows very easily mm-hmm. um, without this. It's, and it's just not as much a, a commitment moving your life all the way to the Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, to the coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like... I mean, you moved here from Indonesia, so I... <laughs> I was about to say... <laughs> I, I, all those people are losers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I was... Uh, for me, I don't know if you know this. Uh, you, you've been to Jakarta as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you, So you know Bandung. Uh, Bandung City. Bandung City. It's uh, West Java, only two hours away. So it's kind of okay. like that, I think. Okay, yeah. So it's close by. So it's like another place, but it's... Kind of like not another place, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's still, but I I wanted to ask somebody about this. Which city in the United States are considered as stand-up cities? You know, like obviously New York and L.A. I heard Boston is a good comedy city. Yeah, like comics from Boston's are are they have this you know kind of like a type, like a grit something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also from Philly, so I've heard. Yeah. Um, is Chicago Chicago is a great stand up sec- city Second City is in Chicago yeah. isn't it Yeah I think it might be more known for improv because mm-hmm. that's where Second City is mm-hmm. but uh, yeah there's so many great stand ups in mm-hmm. Chicago I mean any major city in the uh, stand ups are very uh, it's an american thing mm-hmm. like historically Yeah yeah uh, it's in every city Yeah um, I think you get cert- there's different types like LA comics are typically pretty discernible from New York comics. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, Austin has its own very special brand of, you know, edgy white guys for the most part. <laughs> but uh, And it's it's just starting up, right, in Austin? Yeah, I mean, Rogan moved down there, and now yeah. it's like... Yeah, I think every a lot of comics are doing... He, he has his own club, right? Yeah, Mothership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think... Okay, so Austin, Chicago, Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've heard Boston is great. I mean, his like there was a, a I guess a gra- I don't know what you would call it like a, a graduating class of Boston comics mm-hmm. who are massive like uh, Patrice O'Neill, mm-hmm. Bill Burr, mm-hmm. Louis C.K., mm-hmm. uh, Rogan, if you consider him a comedian. Yeah. And uh, they- <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get you views. I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to get you clips. Well, it's going to work. Yeah. 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 Um, it's so funny to have an open mic or talking shit about that guy, but um, uh, he's great. Um, all those guys came from uh, Boston, so like that—that's an amazing yeah. class of people. Yeah. Um, so from what I heard, I think it's because it was shaped that way because of the people, the audience in Boston. You yeah, know, I think it's they rough. like demand. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're not good or you can't keep their attention, they're gonna throw a beer yeah. bottle at you. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's why like a lot of people uh, from Philly, I think, mm. are are good because they just have rougher crowds. Like, in, in New York, I think the crowds, they just don't give you anything. They ignore you. I was about to ask you that, yeah. But they're not, they're not like, yelling at you, mm-hmm. you know? I remember, uh, so I was doing this uh, bringer show at the Greenwich oh. Village, and there's this one comic. He was just from San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And then he said, he said something in the lines of, We are so used to performing in New York in front of the, these people who are not, who are, it's not that like 
they don't appreciate. But stand up is like everyday thing in New York. Yeah, it's boring. It, it yeah, it's kind of like that. They're used yeah. to it. Yeah, and he said performing in Fr San Francisco, it feels so good. He remembers that I'm actually a good comic. You know, well, well, then why isn't he making the people here laugh? <laughs> <laughs> if he's a good comic, he'd do both. Yeah, but that give me a kind of understanding. Like, is New York really weird that well, way? I mean, it's it's also different everywhere you go. Like, mm -hmm. uh, no show is the same, which is what makes it exciting. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. Like, you can go to a you you can like club comedy is very different than like hipster coffee club or coffee uh, yeah. bar. In Williamsburg comedy, yeah, There's, I'm not saying the one is better than the other, except yeah. for you know the club comedy is much better. But they're they're just very different crowds, it's and true. different people are going to laugh at. I mean, comedy is so specific to the person. Yeah, to to do the generalizing that it takes mm. to be a good comic is like mm. it's hard. Yeah, I saw, um, because a lot of people back in Indonesia, they obviously they know I moved to New York. Yeah, and a lot of people want to know what it's like. Yeah. so I actually wrote a book. It's called pecahkan <laughs> NYC. Yeah, yeah. So pecahkan is an Indonesian term for crushing it. I think crushing it <laughs> in New York City. I mean, you're doing good, but no, crushing but, it. But the no, book is kidding. about. Yeah, no, I understand. It's it's wild. But <laughs> the book is about how hard it is yeah. to crush New York. Yeah. And I was I wrote about in New York, uh, and, and I'm not sure to say this because obviously Mike is, uh, has more experience, but it's like there's two routes, the comedy club routes and the alternative room routes, Yeah, where the alternative room route, routes is, the crowd is very different. Like in the comedy club, people are, I'm in a club, I paid 25 and I paid for two drinks, give me funny straight away. Yeah. When you're performing at bars and maybe coffee shops, mm -hmm. people tend to want to wait you know they want to hear stories like st it's different pace wise I, that's what that's how i feel what do you yeah. think i would say roughly my experience has been similar mm -hmm. um but i think uh i th i don't know i i, I, I don't, i'm not experienced enough to mm. really get None into the nitty gritty are. mike would you would you would you say that I it's think different it, i think it used to be different there oh. used to be a bigger divide between the alt scene and the club scene but mm -hmm. now they're they are very much their own thing but they're they're you can cross over much easier because mm. the crowds are, I think, more com comedy centric and more, you know, in the stand up comedy yeah. because of social media, TikTok, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's, it's, they can be the same. I think if you get in your head about it, mm. it becomes That's different. That's a great point. Yeah. But if you, if you just play each crowd like this is a crowd to come see comedy, you can you can walk the line on both of those with with relative ease. Yeah, I I think that's a problem that I have is like going into a room with expectations of like what I think they're going to be, but you got to just do your shit and like be present and have fun and th they'll that'll reflect. That is so hard to do. Yeah, it's the hardest part. Yeah, yeah. I I yeah. I'm speaking from my own experience. I can't go into a room not thinking about what jokes would they like but it's wild but sometimes you, you see, have like specials that's when you lose <laughs> you Dude, have like that's massive. in indonesia okay well, it but, doesn't matter okay why does I it matter i have 10 years of experience worth nothing here that's not true well the stage present is that might be the only thing that i feel like could transfer but i also i don't know yeah but I i'm think, not doing so well in indonesia <laughs> <laughs> but um first of all i there's only a fraction of jokes that I have in Indonesia that I can, you know, just flip it to English and works. Just, yeah. a, just a fraction, maybe seven percent of it. Yeah. The rest I have to write from scratch. And here's the thing: I did a set in Boston, and uh -huh. I bombed so hard <laughs> because all of my jokes are catered for New Yorkers. I realized eventually. Yeah, that's like, what you learn when you do your first road gig. Is yeah. Like, oh. I can't talk about the subway. Yeah, I can't talk about pizza. Yeah, yeah. In Boston, I was. I had this they joke have about pizza in, <laughs> that joke might just suck. <laughs> they have pizza in Boston. <laughs> I have this joke about you're not supposed to uh, microwave a pizza. Okay. And it that's in New York, people would react to that uh -huh. every time I say I microwave a pizza. The crowd would groan, and then you you play off of it, right? You go to Boston and you say something like that, and it they like. I don't understand why. <laughs> Dude, my, I microwave pizza all the time. It's the, that, that is, that's just another stripe of elitism that you get in New York. That, <laughs> yeah, I guess. You say that in the Midwest that you microwave pizza, people will be like, I did that before I came to the show. <laughs> so they say, what, how else would you do it? Exactly. 
<laughs> yeah. What do I have in a pizza oven? No. Yeah, I, I, I like to banter with the audience every time I say I yeah. microwave pizza. Uh -huh. And and then I said, well, what do you do? It's cold. I, wa I want to eat warm pizza. And then what's wrong with microwaving a pizza? And then I remember one people was like, Everything, everything is warm about microwaving a pizza. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, but that's very specific, yeah. specifically New York. Yeah, because we can just walk out the door and get a fresh slice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that's why it's hard for me, cause, and, and I don't know the zeitgeist of people. I don't know what you're thinking. Like I said, when somebody says Wisconsin, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what zeitgeist means, so we're equal. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, for, <laughs> for everybody else watching, it's the, th the thing that everybody agrees on. Oh, okay. The, the yeah, common uh, for the, everybody that's watching <laughs> the common we understand what that word means <laughs> the common knowledge that everybody knows about things uh -huh. so, so because i remember i think i think kevin sanchez told me this you should stop going to open mics and start living in new york he says because i've been spending time doing mics all the time uh -huh. you know 1 p.m mics 3 p.m mics 5 p.m mics 7 yeah. 9 and then it was like you should live in new york and yeah. to know you know, what's on everybody's mind yeah. to be able to make them laugh. But you can hang. Like, you can hang at clubs and still be, like, working towards comedy and, like, getting a sense of things. Yeah, sometimes I I kind of feel it from other people's set. Mm -hmm. But it's different understanding it from people's perspective and, you know. No. What, what do you mean? Yeah, because, like, eventually I understand. <laughs> this is so stupid. I eventually I understand from a lot of people said that um, New York is a is a Jewish city. Oh, okay, we're getting into it <laughs> no, no, because I have no idea. I have no idea. To me, it's just white people, right? I, I have no oh, idea. Oh, we all look alike. Is that <laughs> Fuck so? you, man. Yeah, uh, right. you know, I, I I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> with that imaginary yeah, I know you got, <laughs> the Rogan shit. Where the fuck are the things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm trying to say is I it needs like when I say an apartment in Flushing, mm -hmm. now I know what an apartment in Flushing looks like in everybody's head. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, okay, but aren't isn't this still trending too specifically to New York? It is. I mean, do your thing. But yeah, yeah. You know. I understand. I remember I, when I had a joke about Starbucks, uh -huh. and then you came to me. Yo, everybody have a, had a joke about. Uh, it was like the, it was calling your name out at Starbucks. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And you were like, "You should stop using that joke because that's hacky. Oh, Everybody's using oh, it." And I'm like, shit. "I didn't know that." Yeah, I didn't know that because yeah. obviously I see a lot of comics, right. and nobody's doing it. But I didn't know it was because people are w over it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it so, might work at show. I mean, because the thing is, comics are are. They they ingest so much comedy that mm. like we have a very small threshold for yeah. like anything that we've heard before. Yeah, I understand. So it I'm, still works when you perform in front of tourists. Yeah, see that there you go. Or yeah, find I, the I, angle that no one's found yet. That's yeah. like the that's even better than finding yeah. a new joke. It's a yeah. common thought, and yeah. then I found a place that no one's gone to yet. Yeah, that's pride. Even more fun. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of pride. In, yeah, because yeah. if you can conquer like a what might start off as like a hacky thing that's probably people will be like yeah. oh wow but that's yeah. comics you don't want to play to comics you want yeah, to right. you want to play to people who pay for tickets you know and but also be yourself because i don't know i think like um also i did that too like everybody has a i just moved to new york set and they do it <laughs> one time at a mic and everybody hears i just heard new and their brains turn off because they go they're just going to talk about the subway and some other bullshit mm. but like mm. you have a very unique thing no, and experience don't. okay yeah no there, there's tons of other comics <laughs> in the at the producers club who have specials <laughs> in, in who have done in the round theaters in indonesia yeah, really, right. i follow your your instagram you're, you're, yeah every time i look you're at an arena <laughs> yeah dude you're fucking like you're you're, you're selling out the tempeh bowl in <laughs> yeah it sounds delicious yeah, it's, it they does. are good it they is, are delicious but i don't know it's i think it's just i think it's also no, this is the bad side of the tempe mentality. Okay. <laughs> which is Indonesians are always like it's maybe insecure is not the word. The Indonesian word is minder. 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 It's when you feel like you're not as good as everybody else. I think that's insecure. I think that is insecure. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have but more yeah, faith in yourself with, with your language. I know a lot of people keep saying, Why are you doing this open mic shit? You know you don't have to do it's it, so right? It's so cool to me that you're doing it. No, but I want to do it. Yeah, I you get should. insecure. I, think you should. I get insecure. I I can go to clubs. Maybe I can go to clubs. Yo, I have this 
so and so people. Uh-huh. Um, I'm bringing. I'm, I'm going to bring in crowds. Yeah. But I'm worrying about. Okay, so bringing crowds is one thing, but being able to kill is another thing. So yeah. I want to work from the ground up, and I want to you know work my way. And I'm not in a hurry. Yeah. So, really. Mm, Maybe a little bit, okay. But <laughs> that's why uh, I remember uh, you told me about the Starbucks bit when I was doing your mic. Uh-huh. Uh, what was the room again? I th- I, oh, I re- Secret Pour. I love it. Yeah, in uh, in in Bed Stuy. Yeah, I think Kevin was t- talking about Secret Pour. He was going to yeah. tape a special there. I I, l- I love the room. Yeah, good room. And and I remember. Uh, you introduced me as the Indonesian Jerry Seinfeld. Do you know I, that's I, made what I a bit? call you every time I talk about you behind your back. <laughs> I call you the Indonesian Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, I made a bit about that. You know that? No way. Yeah, I, I tell I, I, the the bit is like um, I didn't uh, mention your name, but mm-hmm. I was like a comic told me I told people that I'm the Indonesian. Uh, Seinfeld, and I'm like I'm the Indonesian Kevin Hart, which means I'm great at selling ticket. But let's be honest, I'm not really that funny. <laughs> I mean, there's, wow. there's Chris Rock, shots. there's Chris Rocks, and you know Dave uh-huh, Chappelle. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Okay, but um, really throwing shots. <laughs> we I, need I think to- it's harder to like the hard route is to not tell go to clubs and be like I can bring people because that's not why you're here. Yeah, you can sell tickets somewhere else, but in New York, that you didn't come to New York to sell tickets. You came to New York to become a yeah. better comic. That's and it. that's commendable. But not a as lot hell. of people understand that that standpoint, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, we see it both. from a different angle. We yeah. we want to sell tickets here, and it's like, why wouldn't you do that here? You're like, because that's not why I came. And yeah. I think that's that's a better yeah mentality. Think, that's a comic mentality. Yeah, it's yeah. like kung fu. Like yeah, you have yeah. to fight. It's like kung fu. It's not like Kung Fu. It's I don't not know Kung what Fu. the fuck you're about to say. So I'm, no, I'm, no <laughs> like, do you watch Kung Fu movies? Do you know how? Uh, no. They it's have like, it's to like fight. Kung Fu. When I watch your specials, it's dubbed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you, in Kung Fu movies, you uh, you have to fight another fighter who are, who are better than you, ah, and then you became better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you have to you have to beat them to sh- to prove to yeah, yourself in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So, you do. Yeah. That's so. That's why I moved. Everybody was like, "This." I hate this. It, every, everybody back in Indonesia was like, "So how is it? Are you comfortable in New York?" I'm like, nobody goes to New York to get comfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not that. You, yeah. Everybody goes to New York. It's either to achieve something or they uh-huh. run away from something. Right. Fun fact: a lot of Indonesian are in New York because they are running away from something. Really? A lot of them. Like uh, criminal uh, stuff. Yeah, well, th- okay. That's cool. That's the only stuff that people yeah, yeah. should run away from. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a lot of them here in, in New York. Oh, ah, interesting. What were we ta- oh, yeah, we were talking no, about that. but them. that's I would like to hear more about that. That you know what? This this is so fucked up. But I don't want to get you killed. No, no, I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I might get killed back in Indonesia. Oh, well, who cares? You're in New York <laughs> I now. Took shots at politicians, but Yeah. The first week in New York, mm-hmm. I met Indonesian Yeah, and almost every Indonesian I've met s- says this: "It's like, yo, don't tell anybody else that you meet somebody else Indonesian in New York, because you can um, expose their oh. being here when they're illegal here." You know what I'm saying? So, wh- who do you hang out with? Ice? You're not hanging <laughs> out with immigration. No, a lot of Indonesians are snitching. Oh, uh, yeah, it's true. A lot of why? Indonesians, yeah, it's I. Oh, man, this is. Where's the loyalty? There is no loyalty. Indonesians hate each other. Oh man, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, we're so divided. Even in New York, I don't, I don't understand it. Really? Yeah. This yeah. is not a world I know anything yeah, it about. Is. It, Indonesians are. This is this is an actual thing. When you're Indonesian mm-hmm. and you're in New York, yeah, and you're in Times Square for say you're in Times Square and you hear another person speaking in Indonesia, yeah. Common sense would be, oh, another Indonesian. Let me just come up to him and have a chat. That's what I do, and I don't even speak it that well. Yeah, but Indonesian, when we hear another Indonesian, uh-huh. the initial reaction was, oh, fuck, there's another Indonesian here. What the <laughs> hell? True. I, no, but I do that true. when I'm on vacation outside of the United yeah. States. If, you know I hear, feels, right? if I hear another, uh, like Americans, I'll listen, <laughs> and if they start being like too American, I'll be like, God damn it. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's kind of like that. But it's more like for Indonesian to be in New York is a huge thing. Uh-huh. It's an accomplishment. Oh, so another one. Be- it's, yeah, yeah. It's it like when another shots, comic shots gets, gets SNL. You're like, God yeah. damn it! Yeah. It should be me, yeah, just yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly That's that. Funny. So you're in Times Square and you're looking around. I'm Indonesian. I'm in Times Square, and then you say, Ah, senangnya ada di Times Square. Oh fuck! I'm ruining my dream. Uh, what so if they're dressed up as Elmo? Does that make it any better? <laughs> 
if they're working as Optimus Prime, does that does that improve your jealousy a little bit? There's a lot of Filipinos though doing that. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Is there a beef between Indonesia, no. Indonesia and the Philippines? No, Indonesia uh, and Malaysia. Too busy hating each other to really get it. Okay, no, Indonesia, I, Mal- really, yeah. But it's like the same, similar language, right? That's exactly why. Uh, it's the same thing with Wisconsin and Minnesota. The more oh, really? similar people are, the more they like yeah. hating each other. Yeah. Because, they, you know, everybody hates <laughs> Tell themselves. me more about that. Because for Indonesia and Malaysia, yeah. we're exactly the same. We're the same people. It's just we have different... <laughs> Your uh, words, not mine. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We have different um, colonizers. Colonizers. Have, colonizers, yeah. Okay. So, so Malaysia by the British. Okay. Indonesia by the Dutch. Yeah. So when the war is over... Everybody under the Dutch colonization is Indonesian, mm-hmm. under the British Malaysian. Okay. And so it's basically only that, but we're actually same people and same culture. Yeah. But Indonesians tend to think they steal our culture. Yeah. And Malaysians tend to think, the fuck was it this Indonesian, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of like a rivalry. But is it like kind of like if you meet a Malaysian, is it like a, you guys kind of poke each other, have fun? Or is it like, yo, fuck that guy, he's Malaysian? Both. Okay. So there are spectrum to it. Ah, uh, okay. There are, you know, there's always a spectrum. Fun. There's always a spectrum. Yeah. And there's always this side of like, fuck them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, uh, because <laughs> a lot of people in Indonesia are going to hate me for this, but Kuala Lumpur yeah. seems like it's more developed than Jakarta. Than Jakarta? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. They already have like I'm so monorails. Stupid. I, d- yeah. I thought Kuala Lumpur was like a mountain. Uh, I yeah. Didn't no, know it's, that it's, was. Uh, it's, it's smaller than Jakarta. Ah. And Jakarta is tougher to, you know, develop. Because it's bigger and it's diverse and whatever, but it, there's this kind of like um, there's a little bit of envious, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And there's this saying in Indonesia: if only the British was colonizing us, we probably would be so much better. It's it's messed oh, up. It's fucked up. Yeah, but that's so the, you're talking shit about the Dutch while you're <laughs> yeah. doing it. That's good. Yeah, a lot of, in the history books they told us the people that taught us corruption was the Dutch. Wow. Well, it's crazy. Hey, from my experience in Indonesia, they taught you pretty well. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but about uh, uh, Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I, I don't know who we were colonized by, but uh, it's just, it's the exact same place, mm-hmm. but the state lines make it a little fun tribalism mm. to be like, our state is beautiful and your state is mm. it sucks or we drink harder than you guys we do drink harder than minnesota <laughs> that's no it's a fact you, there, you can look at a, a a map of the most alcoholic counties in the uh, united states all of them are just in wisconsin mm. so never say you can out drink wisconsin but uh it's it's basically the same place but mm. You know, just spice it up, keep things fun. Everybody's like, fuck minute. Plus, sports is a big part of it. Right. Like the Vikings and the Packers. And mm. it's just, it, it really is just because it's boring up there. So you need a little rivalry. Minnesota has Timberwolves. Yes, they do. Wisconsin is not a basketball city. Uh, we have the Bucks. The Bucks are, are, are pretty good. Wisconsin is a state. Oh, the Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Milwaukee is in Wisconsin. Oh, I see. And the yeah, Bucks. Yeah, yeah. Champions. Yeah, champions. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. got you. I got you. I mean, it took, we had to, we had to buy a black guy from Greece <laughs> uh, to get, but you know, still pretty good. And it was Lou Cinder, aka Kareem Abdul Jabbar back in the days. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we're, our sports teams are historically build up hope and then destroy it <laughs> the second it peaks. So, like, we always get close, like, the Brewers have had a good team. For, or it felt like we were going to have a good team like every other year for like while I was growing up mm-hmm. like Ryan Braun was a big deal mm-hmm. and then they shit the bed every single time and the Badgers which is the college basketball team which is a big or the college uh, sports team mm. always oh we're looking good this year and then we all but maybe that's just what people say about sports teams yeah I was about to say in New York even there's the, the those kind of you know, team like the Jets yeah. and the Knicks. Yeah. yeah. But see, even in New York, there's there's rivalries between Yankees people and Mets people. Yeah. And the, we're all in the same five-mile radius. Yeah. So yeah. It, people just like a little friendly competition. Yeah, I guess you're right. We don't have a lot of much time left, but, mm-hmm. so thank you very much. Do you have anything to plug? Do you have anything... Uh, my Instagram, Bram Moore twenty three. I run a show every uh, every month at uh, Room Fifty Two mm-hmm. uh, in Midtown called Sophomore Slump. You can follow Sophomore Slump mm-hmm. uh, Comedy on mm-hmm. Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I've I've got a show this Friday at, in my friend's backyard. So you can look at my Instagram for that. <laughs> but uh, this has been super fun. Time flies. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Also, I have uh, I'm running my own mic. 
uh, comedy gym at the Producers Club every Thursday, 9 p.m. It's a $5 mic, a show up, go up kind of thing. So I'd like to see you there. Uh, Grant, thank you very much, man. Appreciate absolute it. Absolute pleasure. Pre- pleasure. Yeah. Hey. Teddy Makasi. Oh, sama-sama. Yeah. Orang Indonesia ku. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. See.